Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mysterious Pal Show. My name is Chris, and I am joined by the Beast in the East, the Best in the West, the North and South, above the rest. Ooh. His name is Jordan. Hey. He's my pal. Hey. Jordan, welcome aboard. Hello. Hi. 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 You doing okay? Yeah. Thanks for coming in. I know it's a it's a it's a long flight. Um, yep, yep. and your arms are tired. Yeah. Yeah. And back again for the second part of our show because it is a continuation from part 1. We have from the deepest reaches of the unknown universe deep within the earth. <laughs> his the bu- secrets is bunker. <laughs> keeping the secrets of all mankind. His name is Brian. Bunker Brian is welcome. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Bunker Brian. It's great to be back here talking about this uh, mysterious uh, killer that's roaming free. Or, well, possibly. I don't know. He's probably dead. By now. Murders. We're back <laughs> to talk about murders. You know, fun stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I see you. Uh, did you fill up your, your fuel there? You fill, fueled everything up? Yeah, these uh, these computers have been um, personally fueled. Um, what I've done is uh, drank all of my '80s uh, computer dr- uh, juice boxes back to back, and I filled all these computers. And they're personally. all and they're all calculating important. Computing. They are processing. They are processing who the Zodiac is right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. it's going to take about three hundred years. <laughs> to get started, so I don't think it's going to work. Yeah. Out. C colon slash. Uh, that's how you boot up a game. In um, no, you if he, if I keep drinking this juice box, you will see my colon. Yeah, okay. C colon slash slash. Yes. Uh, parentheses. Choplifter. Uh, dot exe. Choplifter. Don't don't. Had backslash river raid black black backslash black 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 backslash. 2600. I have a I have an entire case of Commodore games. Really? Yeah, and I have two Commodores, like the TV ones. I don't know if they work still. And like two of the disk drives, and I think one of the keyboards. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know. I'm like, where'd you get all these games, Dad? They're all because none of them are just written in pen. They're all written in pen. I'm like, where'd you get all these? It's weird. Um wonder why that, you know, that whole system went down. Piracy, <laughs> huh? Yeah. I, I actually, it's funny you said that because I, when I was growing up, the games would start up and it's like, <clears throat> you'd see a pirate flag raising and I was like, huh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, isn't that how that one company got started? Um, the Cyberpunk and Rich, which Richer, the Witcher company and Cyberpunk. Oh, CD Projekt Red? Yeah, they were like Eastern European uh, pirating team. Really? That's how they started. That's how they started. They, that's how they started because I guess you know in Eastern Europe, I, it, it might have been they couldn't get you know in the eighties you couldn't get software in, and so they were copying it from the West, mm. getting it in. I, I, th- I think that's how it started. I, I know it was a some kind of the hacking wall. thing. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I won't get off too off track, but you, have you guys heard the or seen the documentary about Tetris, the movie or the documentary? I keep on hearing about that. Is it good? It's really really interesting. I'll, I'll keep it short, but basically, like they. they they exported it out of Russia, but it was this huge scam where these software companies were making money on it without Russia or, or the original developer making any royalties on it. And eventually, uh, Nintendo wanted to buy it out, but it went to this huge court case, and it was like this huge scandal, too. That's why they made it a movie eventually. It was pretty cool. And that's what the documentary is about and the movie is about? Yeah, the docu- there's a good UK documentary, like a BBC documentary. I couldn't. It might be called uh, From Tetris with Love or something like that. And then the movie Tetris itself is the whole, it focuses on the purchasing of the, the licensing and like the whole scandal and everything. It's pretty crazy. I'll have to watch that never. Thank you for telling me. Um, you gave away, you gave away the, uh, the ending there. Oh, we, Spoiler alert. We know how it ends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. What happened inside Titanic? Don't tell me. Hey. It's hey. on the bottom of the sea. Don't tell me. Hey. Hey, Jack was a beautiful human being. He gave up his place on the door. I've seen, well, I've seen bits and pieces of the film in 4K now, so it was quite beautiful. He he is a, he is a God among men. The Caps. The Caps. Leo, old Leo. All right, we're going to get into something way better than the Titanic, I think. Speaking of handsome devils. (laughs) Speaking of 
Uh, we gotta move along to the Zodiac Killer again. This is part two, and it's actually been like a month since we recorded the part one, so uh, this review was good for me and for everybody out there, maybe. I don't know. You yes. might be listening to it in succession. But the first episode was like two hours long, <laughs> and it was a real doozy to get through to edit. And this is uh, the longest undertaking so far. I've I have uh, I have undertooken. He called up the Undertaker. Yeah, I undertook this <laughs> to write to yeah. And Paul Bear. Paul Bear came out. Paul Bear. <laughs> he was all upset. Is he dead? Yeah. He's that he's passed away. Oh. Undertaker's still kicking though, isn't he? Yeah. Undertaker's yeah. still around. He's retired, but he's still around. Did you did you hear that news about the this is so off topic. People people hate when we do this. Tyson and Logan Paul or Jake Paul, oh, one of those are gonna oh, box. Man, that's be great. It's be great. Oh, we talking about the Tyson thing? Yeah. I hope I hope Tyson just lays him out, man. Tyson, like he, I don't know if he, can he still hit his heart. I mean, he used to hit like a truck. Apparently, yeah, yeah. yeah. He used to be like t- so awesome. He's in his like late fifties though. I'm sure he can still. In my opinion, yeah, he, I, I've seen videos of Tyson in the last few months, like with a walking cane and everything. Oh, jeez. But <laughs> I've also Crap. seen training videos of him going to town, just wailing on dude pads. So I mean. Hey, I'm just, Tyson might get a little juiced up. That's all I'm saying. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he can still hit, but I, I'm not sure about his, his stamina. That's a thing. I mean, you really, I mean, you get hit once with that dude. Yeah. I just remember, I just I watched like videos of him, just like YouTube clips of him. Just, God, he hits so hard. I'd be terrified. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of amazing boxers out there now today that can hit really hard, but he was just like, Butterbean is also on his way back, apparently, too. <laughs> yeah. Is that what I heard? Oh, we're going to talk about Butterbean? <laughs> why, why are you thinking about him? <laughs> Brian Bean's back, everybody. Brian Bunker Beans. All right, we got to move on. Is <laughs> <laughs> Bunker Beans? <laughs> He's back. Bunker Beans is here to stay. Here we go. But j- before we get into the Zodiac, the last, <laughs> since you're talking about just horrible, like, painful, like, knockouts. If you haven't seen the power slap, wait, what's that? The TV show where like they actually hit, smack each other in the face. Yeah, it, so basically, the guy that owns UFC bought it out. It was like they were holding these like backyard tournaments all over the country or world, whatever. And uh, yeah, it's like this officially sanctioned thing where two people stand at a stand, face each <laughs> other down, and the other person has to take <laughs> yeah. a, the That's hardest slap that, yeah. possible. There's some crazy slaps. It's amazing. Pause this video, open another tab. Let's look that up. Come back. <laughs> Come back. Here we go. All right. So we're going to talk about JD. Uh, no, wait. Got that? Got to talk about JD Sullinger. <laughs> Catch her in the ride. <laughs> what a twist. All right. JD Sullinger. <laughs> we're going to talk about the Zodiac Killer. Was a serial murderer who operated in Northern California during the late 1960s and early 1970s. The case is notorious for its cryptic communications that he sent to the media, he or she, she sent to the media and law enforcement, including ciphers and letters signed with the distinctive symbol. The Zodiac Killer communicated to the public and authorities through a series of these cryptic letters, uh, which created this aura of mystery and terror. Um... He sent more than 20 of them to police officials, newspapers, and individuals between 1966 and 1974. Some of these letters included ciphers that have remained unsolved to this day. Some have been solved. The Zodiac's letters were typically signed with a symbol resembling the crosshairs of a gun sight. Each letter began with an ominous phrase, This is the Zodiac speaking. The victims of the Zodiac killer, the confirmed victims, which we covered last episode, uh... We have David Faraday, Betty Lou Jensen, killed on December 20th, 1968. Michael Majot and Darlene Farron, shot on July 4th, 1969. Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard, stabbed on September 27th, 1969. Uh, Hartnell survived that attack, but Shepard died two days later. And Paul Stein, shot and killed while driving his taxi in San Francisco on October 11th, 1969. This is the only attack in which the Zodiac Killer claimed his victims in an urban setting. The Zodiac Killer also claimed responsibility for initial murders and attacks and letters sent to newspapers, but, but these claims have not been definitively linked to specific crimes. The case remains unsolved uh, despite extensive investigations and numerous suspects over the years. Zodiac Killer 
Play that again. Zodiac Killer's true identity remains one of the most fascinating mysteries in criminal history. So now we'll continue this journey along on the murder train. The first stop of this leg of our journey for part two is at Motive Junction. We're going to get off at Motive Junction. Motive Junction. Motive Junction being the place. <laughs> Emo Emodium. Emodium D Junction. So the motive, the Zodiac Killer's motive remains shrouded in a mystery as never stated in any of his letters or uh, communications. He never really kind of like this is why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I guess he never really put that out there. Uh, but there's been several theories, obviously, and speculations. Cosmers did not fall under federal jurisdiction, though. I didn't know this. The FBI never officially opened an investigation into the Zodiac Killer. Really? According to the FBI website. That's according to the FBI. They've never officially, because it never fallen, it didn't fall under jurisdiction, and there's a lot of things where, like, the someone has to ask, like, the state has to actually ask them to come in. Okay. There has to be, like, and there also, unless it's cross state lines then they can get involved i think is how it works there's a lot of right. don't quote me on that but i i know that they have to be asked or brought in because that was an issue with when we talked about um uh the disappearance of the the kids on christmas oh the uh yeah yeah yep yep that was the fbi couldn't come in and they basically he ba the dad actually <laughs> begged them to bring to come in and talk okay. or to, to investigate what wasn't one of his like at least in the letters he said like i'm doing this to collect slaves for like the afterlife or something like that. Yeah, I think that's part of the issue. Was like he just kind of made up stuff that like was like really far fetched. We didn't really go into like I had a bad childhood. Or, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah, wasn't yeah. like nothing you could actually pin on that real. Right. right. So uh, local law enforcement asked the FBI to help with handwritten uh, handwriting analysis, crypto analysis, and fingerprints. Many people have speculated on the profile of the killer and his motives, including the FBI criminal uh, profiler John Douglas, who's written several books which some of them are used as, uh, in, for our research. So these are some of the motives, some of the theories for the motives of the Zodiac. The first one is thrill seeker or power trip. Some believe the Zodiac was motivated by a desire for power and control. His taunting letters in the media and police suggest he enjoyed the attention and feared he generated, the fear he generated. Mm -hmm. So he liked that kind of power he had over sure, people because he scared them. That makes sense. Yeah. Why else would you send those letters? Yeah, though? right, right. The Zodiac's cryptic ciphers and puzzles may have been a way to assert intellectual superiority. That one was going to fall down, and then I kicked it right through. In a profile of the Zodiac Killer on the Crime Library website, Greg McCreary believed the Zodiac Killer's letters shared something about his personality and intelligence. He says, McCreary says, among the most engaging aspects of the crime for him was to be able to taunt the authorities for a superior perspective and to watch the police make fools of themselves. This often indicates a person who feels uncertain about his intelligence to reassure himself he, like he wants to play games with others. Zodiac needed to think he was smarter and uh, than even the best detectives. People who knew him would have been familiar with this. McCreary explored the Zodiac Killer's motives further by saying, possible motives were to prove his superiority, get attention, and control the investigation, create a touristic climate, and relieve uh, excuse me, and relive the crimes via media reports. So he liked that constant sensationalization and everything about it. Another possible note motive was revenge or discontent. The murder of Sherry Josephine Bates in Riverside, California is often considered the Zodiac's first confirmed attack. Some theories suggest that Bates may have been a personal target due to the perceived grievances or vendetta. His killer's rage and discontent could have fueled his uh, subsequent attacks. McCreary, again going back to Greg McCreary, pointed to the, uh, the killer's targeting of couples, which could mean he resented relationships. So McCreary said, going after couples, which he did three times, could indicate that he was envious or jealous because he did not or could not have that type of relationship. So I think that's important because when we talk about positive, possible uh, people, uh, that could have done this suspects. Thank you. Um, he, uh, some of the people that he was, that were killed were some of the suspects that went to school with them. I think Sherry, uh, Josephine Bates was one of the ones that like one of the suspects went to school with her. And so they, they connect some of the people that got murdered by people who went to school with them. Yeah. And, and like one of them, 
Uh, one of the suspects followed one of the murder suspects or that survived across the country when she moved to New York and he followed her. Jeez. I was just going to say on your points, Chris, real quick before you get into the next stop. Back on the letters, he started, at least it seemed this way, he started taunting, like you said, he started taunting, seeing what he could get away with in the newspaper, seeing what he could start printing. And then he started getting more like pushy, I guess, like threatening with his letters. Not only, yeah, get it, like talking about uh, the victims and like giving proof and things like that. But then eventually making empty threats like start shooting children on school yeah. that yeah and you know he started putting more uh demands in the things too like people wearing cross buttons like his crosshair zodiac symbol and things like that uh just and he would definitely like reference that um that things didn't go through and he would be disappointed but i don't know if that like amplified his killings anymore or at least his threats per se but he definitely like went back and forth like that between his letters. And the other thing I was going to say is the personal thing before he started sending letters was, is like you said, Sher- uh, Sherry Bates, um, a few of the suspects touched on how far away the relationship uh, that he could have known her on a personal level uh, through friends and, or friends of friends through parties and, and seeing her at work and things like that. So um, he could have like, touched on that point uh, like you said with the going after couples because maybe he had a a disconnect with a lot of like females Uh, again it's all assumption but uh if that was happening that that first like killing could have started initiating that and then he could have just started picking up on things around his personal life to send these uh newspapers and police to taunt them it's just interesting to think about because it's like you know like what motivated him beyond that first step to start taunting the police and the um, yeah. and the newspapers to go after him, like what what pushed him to do it? Yeah, but he definitely had some mommy issues, that's for sure. <laughs> he may have not known these people at all, yeah. but he may have interacted with them some way. You know, you think about like someone you went to high school with that you like said hi to, yeah, and then like it turns out that person killed like twenty people. You know, like <laughs> or like you think about people that like. You walk, you know, at work, and then they go out and murder a bunch of people. You're like, no inter- like, interactions you had with them could have sent them in one direction or another. Or like, well, you you're saying you like you might have triggered them? Not so much, or like stopped them for a couple of days. You know, yeah. like like there's a lot of different things that you how you affect people in your workplace sure, yeah, and your yeah. schooling and and uh, reverberations of that. And this one one like Sherry Bates may have he may have asked her out or asked her a phone number. She he she said, Ooh, no, get away from me and that could have just snapped. And then he was following her around. You don't know if he was following her around for months. Right. He could have been. But it was and that we, after he went through with it, was that the catalyst that started him going after I mean like you don't know if he knew these people. I mean I'm assuming he didn't because they were so unrelated and plus <clears throat> excuse me, the um the space of um of proper like land like the miles yeah. between these killings too like the distance so i mean he could have been like at a drive through at mcdonald's and they cut him off and he's like i'm gonna follow you for a week and then i'm gonna murder you we, it's yeah, great like, it's so interesting about how the story of how he got from a to b we don't know like what what did he do in his like be- the weeks leading up to a murder was yeah. he was he did he or is just totally random well that's that's what that's the thing with a cab driver that seems kind of out of place with what he was doing at least at the time yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we talked a little about that last episode about how it was just so random. He may have been getting angry, getting cornered, that type of thing. Um, and there's different levels. Like this, you know, I don't really know a lot about. I don't really know a lot about how serial killers work and the different ways they classify them. I've re- I've looked into it, but like there's a lot of really interesting things. Like people that do it just for the body, like the they wanted they want just the the body. Some people do it for the revenge or the anger of it. Like they just they, right. they lose their minds. Some people do it because they're interested. There's all kinds of reasoning, but yeah, what what blows my mind about it is that if it, if it was on a personal level to start, that it if it spiraled off into like this killing spree, but it was like uh, yeah. also planned. Like it wasn't. It was like he timed it out. Yeah. So there's a, a story we're gonna talk about later. One of the uh, suspects uh, who also was considered for the. Um, Another murder in Europe that was kind of the the story is kind of a mirror. We may do it in a future episode because that's another unsolved thing in in Italy. I think after Venice, maybe um, I think it's called the Ve- Venice Butcher or something. I, we'll get into it in a little bit, but like same type of concept of the way he killed people and couples. Hmm. 
which we'll go into. We may even do a future episode on it, but it's like the European Zodiac, they call it or something. But the next motive, possible motive, is psychopathy or sadism. The Zodiac displayed psychopathic traits, including a lack of empathy and remorse. His brutal stabbings and shootings uh, indicated sadistic tendencies. The thrill of inflicting pain and terror on others might have been his primary motivation. Just that feeling of I'm, you know, it goes into like back to superiority almost, but he also just liked doing it. Being in control. And and just the, the brutality of it. Right. Um, another one is desire for infamy. The Zodiac's cryptograms and letters were an attempt to achieve infamy. By creating it, uh, in, in, crap, like, by creating an igne, I'm not going to say this word. Igne- <laughs> yes. <laughs> Enigmatic. Thank you. <laughs> Say it again. Enigmatic? Enigmatic. 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 That word. Pers- N. N. <laughs> oh, yeah. Break it down phonetically. Enigmatic persona. Enigmatic. Yeah, mommy. Enigmatic. Woo. Here we go. He ensured that his crimes would have been remembered for decades. His choice to target young couples in secluded areas allowed him to maximize fear and media attention. So he just wanted... He just wanted people to know that he's doing it, even yeah. though they never knew who he was. He wanted to become a figure. Yeah. I mean, and we sort of based on what he, what he wrote, you know. Another one is symbolic uh, obsession. Zodiac's use of symbols such as a circle with a cross suggests a deeper obsession. Some speculate that he saw himself as a harbinger of doom or a cosmic force. His fixation on astrology and the celestial events adds to his theory, to this theory. So he has a symbolic obsession that, like, he's going to bring the end of the world if he does this and this. You know, his symbol is going to be the Antichrist, or you always have that. Would he ever allude to something like that, though? I I think there's just theories on, like, what profiling would be. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're trying to figure out, like, maybe he did think... Towards, yeah. yeah. Maybe he didn't get to that point. Maybe he, he... We'll talk about some of the suspects that were locked up for random things that may have stopped it. And maybe he just never got to that point. Maybe that's what he thought in his mind, but he, part of the story was he couldn't tell people. Yeah. Like he was like, if it gets out, they have to know that I'm the Antichrist or whatever. And then the last one that I have for motives is failed identity and control. The Zodiac's inability to establish clear identity despite his cryptic messages may have frustrated him. His need for control over the narrative led to the creation of elaborate ciphers. Zodiac's letters often contained threats to kill more people, if his ciphers, ciphers weren't published, indicating desire for control over law enforcement in the media. So that goes and goes into the first one of a uh, of someone who's a thrill seeker of power. He wants power over people, but that also points to a he doesn't have any control in his life, mm-hmm. and he's trying to do this to get control. So, what do you guys think of the the motives? I feel like there could have been like a morality thing too. I see that a lot of times with like serial killers, like they're unhappy with the way society's going they kind of like i'm doing this for the sake of you know morals or religion or something like that um it's why he's i think that's a symbolic obsession yeah yeah, type yeah. Thing. yeah but yeah they don't really go into it it's why he's like targeting these young couples who are, might be sinning yeah he spots they're at he's like i gotta take this matter in my own hands yeah, what they what did that what was another serial killer that was big in that he was like doing it to Hope their souls or something or um, cleanse the earth. I don't know. Probably, probably all most of them. Of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but again, the cab driver, like, what was that about? It's it's interesting to think if it was he did it intentionally or if he did it to throw off the track. Or, yeah. Or right. was it him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know because, and we'll go into this. Well, didn't te- some, a lot didn't, of theories on that, that. Didn't some teenagers claim they saw him after like that that shooting happened with the cab driver? Yeah, but then how do they know that was him? Yeah. That's true. He could have been just taking credit for it. Yeah. I think there was like two police that received the description, but they let him pass. Yeah. And just let him slide. But also, but... like, there's a lot of white guys walking around with glasses on in the 60s. <laughs> the, the wide, the I'm sure they're balding, yeah. you know, I'm sure like they weren't middle looking age. for, you know, a white guy either at the time. Oh, no. <laughs> and we're going to go into some of the theories about that. And I mean, they, but here, we're going to talk about like, it could have been all these murders could have been different people. Well, there's theories on that. They could, the Zodiac could have been just taking credit for all of them. Mm. This guy that just True. like, is it, you see that even now, 
you know how many letters someone gets whenever they so uh when someone when there's like a big murder like a unsolved murder and like in current like today's society like right now um and i heard this with a recent disappearance that turned like that girl gabby whatever her name was uh like her boyfriend murderer and they were she was like on the road with him it's like last year two years two or three years ago gabby pinto or something pintado so when she died there was there were stories about how people were just writing her family and just being like i murdered your I murdered uh, yeah, what yeah. are you gonna do yeah, about it yeah and like calling her house and like there's just insane people out there that, that just take credit for stuff and back in the 70s it's not like they're calling or posting stuff online this dude was just even even some of the victims said that they got calls from people, they got letters. Even that show that he was on, he's supposedly on. How many people called in oh, and was yeah, like, yeah. "I'm the Zodiac," and they're like, "No, I'm the Zodiac," <laughs> and like, so it just could have been that type of thing, where it's just someone's taking credit for it. And almost in a way, like to the um, in the '70s and '80s, like the Satanic Panic thing. It's just yeah. that mob oh, mentality. Right. Once you once you start scaring, once you start rivaling the hive. People are going to start well, assuming everything. We went into sensationalism with the media last time. Like how the media dug, like blew this up. Yeah. The media was one of the problems with this, making it. I mean, he even used the media. Like he mo- used the media properly. Like he was doing it. But like the media fed into it. And then people started feeding it. And society fed into it. And then it became this whole worldwide thing. To this day, it's still one of the biggest murder unsolved cases in the world. And there's tons of them. Like if you watch, um, there's a show on Netflix about, uh, I think it's called the Killing Fields, and it's like only four episodes long, but it's about all these like be- in in like in Texas between these big refinery towns. There's just like open area. It's like open fields, swamp, like all kind of crap. There's just people murdered and dumped in there all the time. Like there's so many unsolved murders every day, every year, every ten years. That there's no way to identify murders because it's just like, and it's not put on the news as much. It's like always that story of like. <laughs> This is terrible. If it's a a blonde little white girl, it's going to be all over the uh, news. Yeah, yeah, but if yeah. it's not, yeah, you know, right. they don't talk about it. Yeah. Well, everything's bigger in Texas, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the killers. Murders. Yeah. The murders. <laughs> there was a girl that was, was it? It was like six months ago, maybe like three months ago. A girl was running her bike around a lake on vacation with her family in upstate New York. And she's abducted. She's like, this is like a, I think, I guess eight, nine, ten, eleven year old girl. She disappears, and like for, I think a day or two. They, like I think it's like two days. Everybody's got, obviously police. Everybody's like searching the area, dogs and everything. And then what? Like one night, like a day or two later, one night, someone puts a letter into their parents' note mailbox, and the police like, what the hell are you doing? Like police were out stake, obviously staking the house out. Mm-hmm. You'd be an idiot not to do that. And it was a letter was like, I have your daughter. I'll give me ten thousand dollars. I'll let her go. And it was like some random guy that just lived around there. And they were like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, I need money. And they went back to his so like- So was he the one that, that did it? Yeah. Oh, they okay, went back okay, to okay. his trailer. The girl was just in his trailer hanging out. She was fine, thankfully. Jeez. But it was like, he's like, I just need money. I took the girl because I need money. He didn't hurt her. Nothing bad. Like he just took her and was like, I need money. I'm going to hold you until your parents pay me. And it was like, it was a trailer in the back of his mom's house too. Like it was in his mom's yard. I was going to say like- in that mindset, like, how do you think you're going to get away with it? <laughs> yeah. Why nowadays. would you just write a letter and put it in the mailbox? Yeah. Like, use the internet or something. Like, come on. And it's not just that. Like, let's say whatever for whatever reason yeah. is crazy mind. But let's say let's say he did go through right. with that and did get the, money. and then he goes back to the trailer. That's that's a trailer yeah. around the corner that has 10k in it. <laughs> yeah, like. Eventually, they're gonna figure it out. They're not gonna just like give you ten thousand dollars. You're gonna walk away and never see anybody again. It's only first off. It's only ten thousand dollars. Yeah. And like, what are you gonna do with that? Blue stuff yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah, the die. Explodes. Or they'll be like, as soon as he picks it up, they're gonna just like a cop gonna yeah. run out of a window and tackle right. him. It'll be like the Chris Hansen cops. <laughs> but thankfully, she was okay, and the girl was returned home. Take a seat. But moving on from motives. We're going to talk about, before we go into suspects, we're going, to, we're going to talk about why could he remain unidentified? So why could the Zodiac Killer remain unidentified? And this is kind of research, you know, people talk about why uh, he has been identified, why he will remain un- unidentified. And mm-hmm. obviously, as time goes on, the likelihood of him being identified is like multitudes. Uh, just The, the DNA just, is drying up. 
Well, if you think about like, what is it, the, the first 48 hours of, the, of, of, a, of a murder or something, they can't solve it, they're probably not going to. It's going to become a cold case. All right, so this is the Zodiac Killer managed to elude capture for extended period of time, obviously, despite the intense efforts of law enforcement. Here are some of the key reasons behind his ability to remain unidentified. The first one is intelligence and planning. While homicidal and possibly deranged, the Zodiac was far from impulsive or unintelligent. He meticulously planned his attacks, choosing uh, secluded locations and targeting unsuspected couples that he wasn't technically, probably, we don't know, connected to. His ability to evade capture suggests a calculated mind that understood how to avoid leaving incriminating evidence. Like, he's pretty good about cleaning up himself, himself especially in the 70s, 60s yeah. and 70s. Obviously, today, it'd be a little different. There's lots of cameras everywhere, but... Right. Um, another one is taunting and media attention. Zodiac actively courted media attention by sending taunting letters and cryptograms to news outlets. His extensive body of written work fueled fascination with the case, creating a mythology around himself by crafting a real-world supervillain persona. Inspired by pulp fiction and comic books, he ensured that the public remained captivated and he could remain elusive because they were looking for a superhero, not a normal person. It's all the comic book's fault. Right? Yeah, definitely. And this is the time <laughs> when they hate comic books, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's the devil's art. Right. <laughs> and then it made $100 trillion in the movies. Weird. Okay. Another one is lack of clear patterns. Obviously, we've talked about this before. Unlike some of serial killers who follow predictable patterns, the Zodiac attacks were diverse, other than there were couples, and they were of a certain age, but they were spread out and sporadic. There wasn't one location. He targeted different locations, used various weapons, stabbing and shooting, and attacked victims of varying ages. The lack of clear patterns made it challenging for investigators to connect the crimes identifying consistent mo uh, modus operandi. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, you do. Yeah, M.O. You got it, you got it. <laughs> I think that's that's important to realize because I, the other thing about that people don't point out, there's only five murders attributed to him. Right, and one, like one of the people survived, but like they, he gave an account of what the Zodiac looked like, but how reliable is that? Right. Especially in the time. Over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause the one that survived was one of one of the ones in the car, is that right? He got he got he got stabbed or shot, I think, and he survived. That was the second victim, okay. I believe. Yeah, the boy, the guy. The guy that yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he got stabbed and he survived. Was he in the car or was, was this the guy that was at, at the the lake? Okay. okay. No, he was the one before the lake. Okay. Mike. So the uh, next part, next one, is cryptic ciphers and codes. Zodiac's use of ciphers and codes add to the extra layer of complexity. His 340-character cipher, cracked by code breakers decades later, baffled investigators for years. Uh, the killer's ability to create and maintain these puzzles hindered progress in the case. So he used these ciphers, which people say is genius, mm -hmm. to kind of lead them. They were spending so much time trying to solve the ciphers because they thought that the answer was in the ciphers. And so people were spending too much time doing that and not yeah. trying to figure out the other actual clues. Right. And that was another genius thing that he did to keep people away from him. Over the years, another thing is false leads and multiple suspects. Over the years, numerous suspects emerged, but none definitely linked to the crimes due to his extensive planning, lack of patterns, ciphers, and other things he did. The extensive written work allowed amateur sleuths to propose various theories leading to the false leads. So again, meeting um, normal people got involved, mm -hmm. caused a lot of misdirections because they all thought they were investigators. So investigators were pulled in a lot of different directions, a lot of different angles on the case. Uh, you know, with a single case, they could uh, they could have gotten a 1,000 calls a day at least. Saying yeah. that my boyfriend or my husband was a serial killer, and, <laughs> and that caused a lot of issues with, because they, they have to track down each one of them yeah. and, and follow up with them. They're just spending too much time tracking them down. So as this case got big, the bigger it got, the more people called in to say that their person they knew were the Zodiac. Yeah. This guy in high school who hit her, hit him, me yeah. was the Zodiac. Uncle Zodiac. Uncle Zodi. Uncle Zodi. Zodi Rody. Okay. We are going to move on to finally what we call theories in this show. But this is aliens. The identity, potential Bad identity aliens. of <laughs> the Zodiac, including. Aliens from outer space. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Oh. That would have been perfect. Yeah. There has to be. I guarantee you if I search that right now, there's going to be <laughs> thousands of sites yeah, on it. He's an alien being from the future. There's going to be tons of TikToks on it. 
What do you think the Zodiac is, man? It's a bunch of stars. <laughs> Why'd they call it the Zodiac? <laughs> All right. Look at the Big Dipper. All right. <laughs> There's your answer. So, uh, uh, Bunker Brian, I know you have, uh, I know you have uh, extensive uh, background in the Zodiac. <laughs> Mm-hmm. In your your years and years and years. And yes, years. I have over research. a thousand floppies uh, <laughs> ready to go. Five point two five dual magnetized discs full of zodiac information. Well, I'm hoping you can help out with some of this stuff because I'm going to go through some of them. Now, there's obviously so many people. There's also a beef I stumbled upon between the. ZodiacKiller.com website owner, writer, researcher, and the Zodiac Killers of there's a there's like beef going between different people that are writing books about this, and they're like friends, and they like in the mid to late 2000s they like break up because one lied to another. It's insane. <laughs> and they sent threatening emails to one another. <laughs> yes, and the the, the one cr- guy cr- posted the them all. <laughs> this is the webmaster speech. Yes, actually, yes, that's exact on ZodiacKiller.com. Since wow. May 1998 was when it first launched. This is the website that looks like a really bad, like, uh, GeoCities website. But this guy has a whole, he only has, like, specifically this website has four main suspects. And there's lots of other, obviously. But these are the main ones that have the best research on them, I guess, whatever. But he has an update from July 15, 2020, talking about this certain, he, he says, Unfortunately for years, a certain individual has spread misinformation about <laughs> this suspect, including false claims, uh, false attacks, and other that have thankfully been finally disproven. And so it goes into, and he Meow. talks about, he has this entire website of how this whole background. He's like, thanks to the, he goes into how because of the, um, because of the, pandemic because this was written in the pandemic time pandemic started he had time to sit down and like go through all like write the entire story out of this like 20 year battle with this guy or friendship then battle going back to uh the 90s oh Jeez. 2006 is when they first met it's insane so zodiackiller.com go like they need up. to go uh, touch some grass that's some pure okay. zodiac clout chase <laughs> the website says zodiackiller.com the only Zodiac website recognized for law enforcement. Recognized by law enforcement. Mm. Since 1998. Well. I need I need some papers. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need to verify it on my server form. <laughs> he does have a pretty extensive like he there's not a lot like there's a lot of stuff out there and he's pretty pretty well trimmed down. But anyway, let's go to our um do you guys want the most ridiculous or the most common kind of boring one first? The most ridiculous. Yeah, most absurd. Okay, first. the first, here's one of two that I pulled out as the most ridiculous. Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Ted Kaczynski. Oh, uh, yeah, yep. Never heard that. I never actually heard this one. There's a theory that points to the Unabomber as being the Zodiac Killer. Ted Kaczynski, who died in prison in 2023, conducted a bombing campaign between 78 and 95 when he was arrested, according to the reporting. Some speculate Kaczynski lived in the Bay Area around the time of the Zodiac killings, and he also sent taunting letters to authorities as the Unabomber, much like the Zodiac Killer. That's the only concept, like the only kind of crossover was he sent letters, but he may have learned that from the Zodiac Killer, so... And he was around the area, which a lot of people were. Number two strangest is the Manson family. I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> heard that. Follow the capture. Heard that. <laughs> follow the capture, uh, capture of Charles Manson is murderous cult. A 1970 report. Because yeah, they were around the, the same time, right? Yeah. Yeah. A report by the California Bureau and Criminal Identification and Investigation stated that all male members of the Manson family have been investigated and eliminated as Zodiac suspects. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's a man. No, family. neither do either do law enforcement. <laughs> to be honest with you, Ted Kaczynski is a bit of a stretch yeah. too. Oh yeah. Well, he was in the area and he liked to ride. <laughs> he was a rider. Put two and two together. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go through this in like a the rest of these guys. So there's 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 a multiple section, multiple killers theory, which we're gonna go into last. Um, unless you want me to do that first. You do what, what you feel like doing. What do you like? <laughs> do uh, yeah, do the multiple. Okay, That's, here's the question. multiple killer theory. So there's a couple different ones here. Before we go into the real ones, um, sure. First off, multiple killers. Some investigators propose that the Zodiac Killer was not a single individual, rather a group of people involved in the murders. The theory suggests that different individuals took turns committing the crimes and collaborated under the same name. That's like they were all connected. They were all multiple killers. Yeah, they were like a gang or like a group. Zodies. Yeah. And that the one guy was like the leader and he wrote all the letters. Okay. <laughs> Number two of the multi, multiple cure, killers theory, multiple murders theory. Copycat killers. After the initial Zodiac killer uh, murdered his first victims, some believe the copycat killers emerged. These individuals mimicked the original Zodiac's modus operandi and, co- and continued the murders, perpetuating the legend. So, All right. Possibility. Yeah. But, again, that to me, that kind of sounds like because there's probably a lot of murders around this time. Yeah. A lot of unsolved murders. Yeah. A lot of assumptions. Like, when was um that the boy who got, that one episode we did on the boy, um Walter Collins? That was the 20s. Oh. Well, I mean, <laughs> 1900s, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, how many people that are still, they were, they were finding how many bodies buried that Oh, farm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? Could have been that guy. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the next one. Uh, the is next one the killer is and the, the killer writer, and the letter writer. Which another theory. Which posits another that theory posits that there, that there were two distinct the individuals: the actual killer and a person responsible, responsible for writing the letters. These two people might have worked, together, people might have worked together, or together or acted, or acted independently, helping each other out, helping each other out to kind of like gain the to fame, to kind of like gain the fame from each other. Kind of like they were like. Kind of like they were like. Yeah. My last multiple killers theory. There was a recent documentary by uh, on Peacock, which. All the good stuff's on Peacock, I guess. Called Myth of the Zodiac. You guys watch that? No. Myth of the Zodiac. It's no, recent, like very it. recent. Suggests that the Zodiac killer may not have even existed. Hmm. It was a myth. Again, like I go into. He could have been not real. Wait, what? Yeah. Didn't but didn't they provide did, <laughs> wait a minute? Wait a minute. Was a figment of our, everyone's imagination? <laughs> you just say otherwise. Hold on a second. <laughs> didn't he in the second letter send a stitch of clothing with the blood of the one of the victims. Yeah, the cab driver, right? Stated right. facts or, about the uh, crime scene and things like yeah. that. But what, what's now your theory is that they never existed? The, the, that's not my theory, dog. No, but I'm saying <laughs> that you're saying. I know, that this Don. Person... I know there's a lot of auction down in that bunker of yours, but like, <laughs> big boy, I, it wasn't me. Don't make me flicker the lights down here. You're gonna get me upset. I'm just saying. So, um, what, what, how is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, what's, like, the, what's the reason? It's kind of a combination that? of these. Like, I okay. think it's a combination of like. Okay, I'll go into a little bit, but like, I think it's a combination of maybe it's multiple people, and there really was, and this one guy was writing letters, or multiple guys were writing letters, just to follow up with the fame. Mm. But also, here, here, here's what they say: If it's not a hoax, obviously the question remains who could commit these crimes. These could have been nothing more than multiple murders committed at a specific time frame by different people. The media society was dri- the media and society was driven by sensationalism to prop up the Zodiac killer, and investigators remain laser focused on one killer with a type of framework, given the type of framework, and a very specific type of serial killer, not seeing the other details. Like I said, so many people were reporting things, and it just kept too many too many people, too many cooks in the kitchen. They would say. All right. So that's the non-existent or uh, hoax theory, which. Again, it was on a document called Myth, a documentary on Peacock called Myth of the Zodiac. Please write me a check, Mr. Peacock. Whatever your name is. <laughs> There's a game out there called, I think, is this is the Zodiac. Oh, yeah? Don't buy it. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> I was what, really what, stoked for what it. What system or genre? Uh... PS4 and Steam and. Yeah, don't. Are don't. you the Zodiac? <laughs> Are you? The... Yeah, I mean, isn't every game. <laughs> You're like trying to discover who the okay. Zodiac is, right. but it's it's just it's not done very well. Says you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I have. I said it. One, two, three, four, five. Pop six. Six. <laughs> so I think seven people potential. Three are pretty good. Four maybe pretty good. One. A couple of them are 
kind of not good. But I'll go into my favorite one first. All right. Who's your personal favorite? Who's batting a thousand here? <laughs> Giuseppe Bevilacqua. Whoa. I've never heard of this I, one. I did not never expect that one. answer. Let's let's hear isn't, this guy. Isn't Bevilacqua from that's that's something from Seinfeld. It's a person from Seinfeld, Bevilacqua. Anyway, Giuseppe Bevilacqua. 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 Giuseppe Bevilacqua. Oh. In twenty seventeen, Italian germanist Francisco uh, I'm gonna say Emicone. Emicone? Uh, yeah, it looks like Emicone. Yep. Independently investigated Giuseppe Bevilacqua, a retired army surgeon and former superintendent superintendent of the Florence American Cemetery in Memorial. Connecting him as a suspect in the Zodiac and Monster of Florence cases. Monster of Florence is that one I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Is if you look at like the murders, they're kind of like the same type of thing as couples and blah blah blah. We may do an episode on that, so don't look into it. Or maybe you'll do it because I'm done with murders. This is this don't is, Google this, it. Don't Google it. So Francisco, again, the guy, the Italian journalist, reported that during a September 2017 phone call, Bevilacqua allegedly hinted at his involvement in both the Monster of Zodiac and the Monster. Of Florence and Zodiac cases, initially expressing willingness to turn himself in, but later changing his stance. The conversation was not recorded. Italian authorities dismissed the investigation into Bevilacqua in 2021. Bevilacqua passed away in December 23, 2022. Uh, Francisco sent Bevilacqua's DNA profile to the U.S. authorities investigating the Zodiac case in November 2023. There was a connection with him and the Monster of Florence because the Monster of Florence is a name commonly used by the Italian media for an identified serial killer active within the metropolitan city of Florence between 74 and 85. So right after the Zodiac would have ended, this guy, like... It wasn't his last letter in 74? And he may have went to Florence, I guess Mm. is what they're saying, and continued. The monster murdered 14 victims, usually young couples, secluded in uh, search of intimacy in wooded areas during a new moons. So same kind of people. The MO may have been different. I didn't really look into, like, how he killed them. If he stabbed them, shot them. Um, but it was again right after he would have left America and went back to Italy. That's what he this is what this Francisco was saying. Interesting. That's my favorite one because I like the name. Giuseppe. I wish my name was Giuseppe. There, I'm just gonna just gonna say this. You look like a Giuseppe. <laughs> I I used to eat a lot of spaghetti. That's spaghetti. besides the point. Here's my point. Let's say this Giuseppe B. Vale, how do you say his name? Bevilacqua. Bevilacqua. Let's say he's one of the Zodiac, like a potential. But he is a potential. Would it, would it, would have he had an accent when he told these victims to get on the ground oh. and stuff? Maybe, unless right, he was like right. the Batman, like Christian Bale was like, get on the ball, get on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I guess he would have had to have an accent, right? Of course. But did he mask his, did he mask it though? Did he just go, roar, 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 like do the growl? I don't know. You're just doing a horrible Cookie Monster. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait, wait. Do you know? Do you know Cook? Do you know Cookie Monster's real name? He has like a real name. I found this oh. out. Have we ever talked about this? I don't think. His real name is Sid. 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 Just Sid. Sid. Before he became Con- Cookie Monster, when he was a baby, his mom made him cookies. His name was Sid. His mom brought in some chocolate cookies. And he turned into the Cookie Monster. And to this day, he's the Cookie Monster. How'd you find that out? It's in a song he sings. Oh, yeah. Which I'm gonna say that <laughs> somebody working it's, on the show has a kid named Sid yeah. and threw that in there. Now it's canon. The re- it's, yeah, the rec- reconned it. It's canon. All right, I'm gonna go to two more. I want to go to two others that are lower on the pole of uh, identities for people who were the Zodiac possibilities. Mm-hmm. Richard Marshall. Uh, Police informants accused Richard Marshall, a silent film enthusiast, of being the Zodiac Killer, claiming that he privately hinted at being the murderer. Marshall lived in Riverside in 1966 and San Francisco in 1969, close to the scenes of the Bates and Stein murders. Is he the one that had a basement? I remember that being a thing in like the movie. Yo, you get into the film? Yeah. So, <laughs> what was it? Uh, no, th- th- in the film, uh, they had Rick Marshall's posters in a guy's uh, basement yeah. that used to work but then he got creeped out. So I'm not, I, I, I don't think that actually happened. But So throughout most of his life, though, Marshall alternated between two names for unknown reasons. No one knew why. He was born something else, and he called himself Rick Marshall. During the Zodiac's crimes in 68 and 69, he worked in San Francisco silent movie theater called The Avenue. He hosted screenings uh, of a movie called The Red Phantom, which... Uh, 
which the uh, the name used by the author of the possible 1974 Zodiac letter. Detective Ken Narlo, who was like kind of the main guy with investigating, the, said that Marshall makes good reading, but is not very good. Uh, he's not a really good person to, to say is a Zodiac. Yeah. In 1976, Marshall became Zodiac suspect after making suspicious comments, like I said, on his ham radio. Hmm. And he agreed to be interviewed by Ken Narlo, but denied being the killer in the interview. So. Possible but probably not. Another one, Louis Joseph Myers. In February 2014, it was reported that Louis Joseph Myers confessed to a friend in 2001 that he was a Zodiac after learning he was dying from cirrhosis of the liver. Ooh. He requested that his friend, Randy Keenan, or random Randy Kenny, not Keenan, Kenny. Keenan and Cal. Do you know Keenan and Cal had a, had a second Tom? movie? Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Good Burger too. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. It's only on. It's on. It's only on Peacock or Paramount. <laughs> Paramount. It doesn't look too good. It doesn't look too good. It didn't look, no. didn't look too good. Don't get, do it. Didn't go look good, Brian. Didn't look good. Uh, it looks pretty horrible, guys. <laughs> but all that. Did you? Okay, we've. I don't know if we ever talked about this in the show. Can we do a podcast? <laughs> no, we're going to do one on the Boscar Children book series. Um, did you ever watch? Did you ever watch? Um, you can't do it on television. Yeah, loved it. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever see a but the one with the, the the lockers? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where the, yeah, that's where the slime came from. Did you know? The, did you ever see the skit in there where the kids were wearing black bars? They were carrying around the black bars to like block their because they weren't wearing clothes. I don't remember no. that one, but I believe it. Yeah, and like they would hold like they'd be like in this house, and they were like. Oh no, I gotta oh don't drop my black bar. And they were like, you know, they put black bars <laughs> oh, yeah. over nudity and stuff. Which I'm really kids, far away from the thing, but kids were doing this. Yes, in the oh show. God, you remember. can't do it. Yeah. Canadian TV. Yes. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, it was it, that was a that's a weird show. Amazing theme song too. I mean, just watch some of those. It's all on YouTube. You watch this episode. Yeah, it's just a crazy show. Yeah, no, dude, like they just had a kid that. on a fucking, <laughs> Brian. um what's it called? Uh shooting post. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was like a common thing they did, right? It's like a common thing. Yeah, that in the dungeon. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. I remember the, the beginning of that shoe used to freak me out. Was, was that wait. scene where the guy opens up his mouth really wide? And I was just like, I was like, ah, and then no, they yeah. put the kids <laughs> to the meat grinder. Yeah. Wasn't uh, wasn't the guy on the shooting post like did have like a guy and one of the actors was like uh, mimicking Saddam Hussein? Like he was dressed up like him. Yeah, he was doing um some foreign power like dictator. Yeah. I forget who. I'm sure it was Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Somebody, yeah, from the 80s. All right, so, yeah, you know, that's a good show. Anyway, 2014, <laughs> it was reported that, okay, I said that. He was reported as uh, confessed to being the killer in 2001 to a friend. His friend, Randy Kenny, uh, went to the police up, uh, upon his death. Myers died in 2002. Kenny allegedly had difficulties getting officers to take him seriously. So he went to the police as soon as he died in 2002, but... He was not being taken ser- seriously. Hmm. And here's why there could be some kind of crossover that this could actually be him, like he, kind of common thing. So the connections between Myers and the Zodiac are pretty, there's a few of them. Um, Myers attended the same high school vic- as victims Faraday and Jensen. He allegedly worked in the same restaurants as victim Farron. Hmm. And between 71 and 73, when no Zodiac letters were received, Myers had been stationed overseas with the military. All right. Ken, uh, Kenny says that Myers confessed that he targeted couples because he had a hard, a bad breakup with his girlfriend. While officers associated with the case are skeptical, they believe the story is credible enough to investigate as Kenny could produce credible evidence. Hmm. So that was um, Dan, no- Dan Noyes was the author... Uh, 2014, it called the I Team Friend Confesses to Being the Zodiac Killer. So, which, by the way, we we've been through two killers so far that have confessed it on their deathbed that they're the Zodiac. So far, yeah. I just want you to imagine for a second, like let's say, like I'm on my deathbed and I went, I'm like, um, by the way, I was the Zodiac, and they're like, you're like Brian. They already found the Zodiac. <laughs> they have the DNA evidence. It's been proven. It's like, oh. I was just fucking around, right? <laughs> uh, uh, and dead. 
I like how we're all like gathered around you. Like, or it's all of us. Like, hey, in my computer, hey, (laughs) your computer bunker. Hey, thanks for letting us down here. Finally, it smells like pee. Yeah. (laughs) No, that's that's part of that's me. Well, no, I mean I was doing that before I had problems, but that's okay. (laughs) Anyway, welcome to my computer lab. But the secret is, I am the Zodiac, but not really. But I am, but not. So you're not really dying. You just want us to come over. <laughs> yeah, you lied to us. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. hang out. Yeah. yeah. I just want you guys to play River Raid. With <laughs> you. All right. So we're going to move on to Lawrence Key or Kane, which yeah, hmm? Lawrence Kane or Key. Two different last names. We'll go into that. Yeah. 1969, during the peak of Zodiac activity, Kane was 45 years old. He stood 5'9 and weighed approximately 160 pounds. Right around now. I didn't wait. Again, every guy in that, <laughs> at that time. Basically, every American guy at that time. It was the American weight. He would go on uh, to use many aliases, including Larry Kane. Lawrence Kane. Larry Kane. All right. Yeah. He had a lengthy criminal sheet dating back to the 1940s. Kathleen Johns, who claimed to have been abducted by the Zodiac, picked him out uh, of a lineup. So that was the girl that the, he, the with the baby yep. that he abducted. Thrown out of the car, Captain. yeah. Pam Huckabee, sister of Zodiac victim Darlene Farron, claims Kane followed Darlene in the months before her murder. This mm. guy was following her around. Patrol officer Don Fook, Fuki, possibly observed Zodiac following the Stein shooting, said that Kane closely resembled the man he and Eric Zelma, Zelms, Zelms had observed walking away from the scene. Okay, puts him in another place. Kane also worked in the same Nevada hotel possible, as possible victim Donna Lass. As a result of a massive brain damage from a 1962 auto accident, Kane was allegedly diagnosed by a psychologist in 1965 as losing the ability to control self gratification. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that was not what it said anybody. <laughs> Kane, who was diagnosed with impulse control disorder after suffering brain injuries, was previously arrested for voyeurism and prowling. He was arrested in Redwood City, California in August 68. The arrest was just four months before the Zodiac's first San Francisco Bay Area murders of the six, of December 20, uh, 20th, 68. However, Kane died in 2010 in Rio, Nevada. A French Moroccan man claimed in 2001 that he solved the Z13 cipher and the solution to the puzzle reads, my name is Care, which he said is likely the typo for K mm. E K. Others disputed the Zodiac. Others disputed this theory because it couldn't have been used to solve the cipher. So, it, you know, that that's not really a good way to say, like, oh, that, that solves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? And also, other people say, like, he never actually solved the cipher. That doesn't make any sense. Blah, blah, blah. So, obviously, there's a lot of infighting with the people that are, uh, you know, going over this. Uh, okay, so that's Lawrence Key or Kane. Is it K? Would it be Lawrence K? Did I mess that up? K A Y E. That's not key. Kane or K. K. Okay, I messed it up. It's not key. It's Kane. Yep. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm fault. sorry. It's all right. Okay. Sorry, Brian. What are you guys doing over there? <laughs> What's going you on? You like? Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. We're getting to the we're getting to the heavy hitters here. I remember. Uh, hold on. I remember seeing somewhere oh, God, that. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Someone uh take a drink for this one. Someone uh or a group of guys has ciphered one of the like longer ones. Like um Yeah. Saying that uh they ciphered <laughs> They deciphered it, saying that uh apparently the Zodiac in this decipher saying he wasn't the one that called the T V station during that, that uh that whole thing. Okay. I think I remember hearing about that. Yeah, so reading that, yes. Yeah. But that was it. But the ciphers seems like people solve them and then don't solve them. Like, it's just like right. everyone's fighting around it because yeah. they want to be the guy that solves it, obviously, the person who solves it. Except for that first one. So. And whereas, like, one letter or one section makes sense, it doesn't make yeah. sense. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. They, They're just looking for they, answers. They pick out parts and, like, hey, look at this. And this is what, and they report on it to get, you know, recognition and funding. It's like that Jim Carrey movie, The Number 13. 
23. Wait, is that number is that, 23? Isn't it number 23? Yeah, yeah. Wait, but is that the one that's come out at the same time as uh, knowing with uh, Nicolas Cage? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it came out at the same time, but I do. I haven't seen knowing, but oh, I no, know what film it was. Knowing and in 2012, but came out at the same time because they're both about the same crap. Okay. Knowing was a, it was all about the mind calendar. Right, yeah, yeah. right, right. Knowing was like he knew that it was actually happening and 2012 was about, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so this is the one that, this is the one that got ZodiacKiller.com and his friend got into arguments about, but it's about Richard Gajkowski. Gear. Richard Gear. Yep. Who's that? You know, Red Corner. <laughs> Who? Mothman. Red, Robert Redford? <laughs> Robert Redford? <laughs> Sneakers. <laughs> Sneakers. Did you ever see Pete's Dragon? Yeah. Like the new one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The newest yeah. one? The yeah. live action one? No, uh, oh, yes, they're both live action. Red Redford's in that, and he just plays this weird old guy that's just sitting there telling. He's like whittling stuff, and kids are like, come up to him. I'm like, hey, Grandpa. I don't remember that movie. The, the most recent one? Like the yeah. live action? Like the one with uh, the green dragon? It's like a dog? Yeah, yeah. He's like, in, he's, like the, he's like telling the story. Okay. And he's like in his backyard, and his daughter's the one who finds the boy. And, and adopts him. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So that old guy, he's just whittling in his bed, like carving stuff. It's a weird movie. So he's the Zodiac? Robert, you said Richard Gere was. Yeah. Who's that? Actor. What's your favorite Richard Gere movie? Um, the one, I think it's the one with the gerbil. Scent of a Woman? Is that one of them? I, I heard about that one. Uh, no, it's, it's uh, Al Pacino's that one. Scent of a Woman? Yeah. Yeah, that's What's Al that Pacino. About? He's a blind guy. Who uh, college kid takes out on the town? Yeah, makes sense. You know, I you know a movie I saw recently. <laughs> uh, Richard Gere's officer and a gentleman. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's a yeah. Richard Gear. That's a yeah. Richard Gear joint. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a Richard Gear fest. <laughs> I'm telling you, Red Corner is my Richard Gear. Red jam. Corner. What's Red Corner? I don't know if I know that one. He's oh, an man. American businessman. He's trying to seal a deal with like a huge uh, satellite TV thing, and he gets framed for this. Um, Murder in China. Is that coming to America? No. <laughs> That's a good one. No, it's twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger. They've been saying they were going to make remake that movie for years. Eddie Murphy is the third twin. Oh no, they were going to remake it with um, uh, it was uh, crap. The Rock and um and oh, Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart. I don't know if that ever got that. Probably just never got off the ground. But that was supposed to be. <laughs> I'm tired of Kevin Hart movies. Just saying. You don't want to see Borderlands? Do we need another Jumanji? Come on, man. <laughs> well, that's good. I never saw him. That Fallout, Fallout movie looks good. So that's a show. Or a show, yeah. Yeah, Amazon show looks cool. Yeah, it looks awesome. Okay. Well, okay. well. Richard Gajkowski. <laughs> Richard Gere. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so what was Fry Green Tomatoes about? <laughs> Uh, a bunch of ladies in like a restaurant and they were like getting along and they made some tomatoes. <laughs> they made some tomatoes. When I, when you, okay, I saw, I saw recently, this is so dumb. I saw recently that like, there's, there's this like, a, um, kind of like thing people can have. It's not like a disease, but it's like a syndrome or something where you can't picture things in your mind. They got unable to make, make images in your mind. Like when you think of like an ocean, you like, you can see it in your mind, right? There's people out there that can't do that. There's like a thing, I guess it's becoming more well known. And people are just like, hey man, I, I, I can't do that. And everybody's like, what? You're weird. Why do you mean? And so they just can't picture things in their head. Like if they want to invent something or create something, a drawing, they can't because they can't see things in their heads. All right. And they can't like develop images in their mind. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What are they supposed to do? But that's like, it's like a real thing. Like, look, it's crazy. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway. Where was I going with this? Does Morgan Freeman have that? Morgan Freeman picturing stuff in his head? What are you Does talking he about? Does he have that? Wait, what was yeah. I going to say? I don't know. <laughs> We're talking about Morgan Freeman. Okay. You brought that up. Fried green tomatoes. Yeah. Fried green tomatoes. And no, no, no. Fried green tomatoes. I don't remember. Anyway, <laughs> Richard Gajkowski. Richard Gajkowski. It was reported that some proponents of the theory that Richard Gajkowski could be the Zodiac Killer have pointed to a certain circumstantial factors. These include... Geographic proximity. He lived in the San Francisco Bay Area during the time of the Zodiac killings, of which aligns with the geographic locations of the crimes. Journalistic backgrounds. Gakowski had a background in journalism and had some uh, had 
Some had suggested a connection between Zarek Killer's communications to the media and potential interest in knowledge of journalism. <laughs> I was reading over your shot. Oh, horizon. oh. So he had a background in journalism. Some have noted that initials of R. Uh, Richard Gajkowski match those of Zodiac Killer's known cipher, RG in one case, leading to speculation about deliberate connection. So he used RG sometimes for some reason. Gajkowski served in the military during the 1950s. And this is important because it was known that Gajkowski was trained as a medic. Medics were trained to tear the clothing off bleeding victims to use as a bandage if they did not have access to the proper equipment. Undershirt first, then shirt, then pants if necessary. That was the order they had to do it in. Rip the stuff off. That is the order of cleanliness, with the shirt tail being preferred if tucked in. Zodiac tore off a portion of the victim's shirt tail. Unfortunately, since 80% of the records were destroyed by a fire in 1973, not much is known about Gajkowski's military career. In 1965, Gajkowski was intentionally arrested. So he intentionally meaning he got himself arrested for refusing to sign a traffic citation following a routine stop in California. He was an investigative reporter for a local newspaper, so his goal was to write a story about the conditions within the county jail from the perspective of an inmate. So he got himself arrested. He would have had mugshots and fingerprints recorded with yeah. Uh, in this case. However, by the time Gajkowski became a Zodiac suspect, more than 20 years later, records of fingerprints were long gone, making a comparison to Zodiac's fingerprints impossible without either Gajkowski's consent or court order. These were lost in that fire, I'm guessing? That was for his military uh, records. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. There was no evidence that any, he had never, there was no evidence that he gave his consent or anything like that. There was no court order for it. At the time of Gajkowski's intentional arrest, he was living less than five miles from the Zodiac Killer's first eventual attack, the Lake Herman Road murders. Hmm. Eventually, Zodiac victim Darlene Farron of Vallejo, California, got married on June 1st, 1966, and moved to Albany, New York. Ooh, all right. Gajkowski quickly followed, moving across the country from Martinez, California, nor near Vallejo. Farron's husband worked on the Albany Times Union newspaper. Gajkowski worked in the same building at, at the rival Albany Knickerbocker News. <laughs> in 1973, four years after Farron was killed by the Zodiac, the Times Union received a letter from someone claiming to be the Zodiac. When solved, the cipher that was included with the letter made references to the Albany Medical Center. All right. All right. In 1969 to 1971, Gajkowski was a member of the anti-police pro-violence counterculture newspaper commune in San Francisco called Good Times, which had a history of radical ideology. As early as January 1969, the Good Times newspaper was running violent works of fiction that were nearly a blueprint for the Zodiac's future crimes. Wednesday was pr uh, production day for weekly Good Times newspaper with the staffers working from early in the morning until very late at night to prepare the news issue, the new issue. Between Zodiac's debut in 1969 until the Good Times folded in 1973, the Zodiac mailed 15 letters. Never did he mail a letter on a Wednesday, although he did on every other day of the week. Never on a Wednesday. Which is the day that week they work late. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. At the time of, his, of the murder, the Good Times switchboard was located only yards from the residence of Zodiac's victim, Paul Stein, on Fell Street in San Francisco. I don't know how it's really connected because he shot him in a cab. It wasn't like he was looking for him. Carol, Paul Stein's sister, recognized Gajkowski as having attended Paul's funeral. Stein was killed on San Francisco, Washington Street. Only one Gajkowski was listed in the city directory at the time, Richard's cousins, and she lived on Washington Street. Her birthday was October 11th, the very day Stein was murdered by the Zodiac. A lot of coincidences here. Stein, a cab driver, was the one victim whom the Zodiac could choose when and where he would be killed. On the very day Zodiac deb debuted by mailing three rush to editor letters to three separate newspapers in the San Francisco area, each letter containing one third of the code, 
The Good Times, edited by Kaikowski, just happened to run a cover that was split into thirds. It was the only instance of Zodiac mailing a letter on a Thursday until after The Good Times folded in 1973. Five months later, The Good Times published a three-part code of its own. The Good Times uh, also occasionally ran sensationalistic Zodiac killer headlines that were out of place. In articles he published in 1969, Gakowski had the habit of shortening his last name to four letters and used multiple spellings such as Gaik or Gaik. Interestingly, G-Y-K-E yeah. can clearly be seen in Zodiac's three-part cipher mailed on only uh, mailed on July 31st, 1969. What's more, Zodiac chose to decode the cipher phonetically. It gives you Gaikowski's full last name. All right. There's a lot of crap with this guy. At right. the very time of the Zodiacs wrote his letter, his only letter to Vallejo, uh, the Vallejo Times Herald, Gakowski's best friend Bob worked at the very newspaper. Old Bob. Even though the Good Times was a counterculture hippie newspaper, once Gakowski came on board, it ran free ads for such unlikely events as performances of the Mikado, the Zodiac's favorite, sometimes uh, who quoted from the Mikado in his letters. On March 13th, 1971, the Zodiac sent a letter to the Los Angeles Times con- coinciding closely with the mailing. Gajkowski was involuntarily committed to the Napa State Hospital after going berserk. He was then diagnosed with a mental in- illness and began treatment at Mount Zion Hospital in San Francisco. The Z- uh, Zodiac did- didn't write again for almost three years. Oh. So he sent a letter the day- same day that Gajkowski went berserk. Yeah. Um, when Zodiac reemerged in 1974 with letters referring to a recent movie releases, Gajkowski was operating a storefront theater in Mission District of San Francisco. A film buff, Gajkowski eventually became involved with San Francisco Roxy Theater. Nancy Slover, the police dispatcher who uh, spoke with the Zodiac in July 1969, has identified Gajkowski's voice as being the same as Zodiac's voice. Ooh. In, 18, or in 1686, the Napa County Sheriff's Department briefly investigated Gakowski after urging from the gold catcher and Pam Huckabee, who is sister of Darlene Farron. The gold catcher is like a popular online person who posts a lot about the Zodiac. It, it, it's a screen name, gold catcher? I don't know why that person, I think it's a woman, used that. By the way, you said six, like, 1686. <laughs> 1986. Did I say 1986? 1986. That's when that happened. The gold catcher and Pam Huckabee, sister of Darlene Farron. So I guess the gold catcher is like the person who does a lot of research and it's like, she's well known online for this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Detective Ken Narlow did background check on Gakowski and put him under surveillance for a few nights. In 1986, the California Department of Justice determined that Gajkowski's handwriting had consistencies with Zodiac's handwriting and more samples of Gajkowski's printing was request- requested. So, Department of Justice said, this guy. All right. We like this guy. There was not enough probable cause for an arrest or search warrant, and the investigation ended. He died of cancer in 2004. Damn. In San Francisco. Okay, that was a big one. That was our buddy... Richard Gajkowski. You know anything about Richard Gajkowski? Anything you want to add in? Uh, not The only thing about Richard was I know that he did have relations or at least you were making references that he, he followed some of the victims or at least lived close to them and, and did that same thing of like tracking some of the victims or members or <laughs> members of their families. Yep. That's really the only thing I know about him compared to the other guy you're going to get into. The other guy is my personal favorite. There's two more. Well, okay, we'll see if, who's next on the list. And we're going to put up here Gary Francis Post. A volunteer cold case team claims an FBI official confirmed their suspect for the Zodiac killer is listed as a suspect and ac- uh, accuses governmental agencies nationwide of inadequate investigations. Thomas Colbert, an investigative journalist leading the nonprofit volunteer team Case Breakers, stated in a press release that a whistleblower on his team was informed by FBI agent Gary Fran- that Gary Francis Post, an Air Force veteran, is considered a suspect in a data- database for the killings and that the lab has uh, a partial DNA sample. According to the group, Post had been secretly listed as a Zodiac suspect in headquarters computers since 2016. 
with his partial DNA stored at the Fed's Quantico, Virginia lab. Despite reports, the, v, uh, the FBI consistently denies the case is solved, confirming uh, its ongoing nature in October of 2021. The case breakers team now believes that they have linked posts to each of the murders and seeks law enforcement to compare DNA found on a hiking mat confirmed to belong to post with DNA from the crime scenes, including mystery hair found on Sh- uh, Sherry Joe Bates, who was a potential victim. Riverside Police Officer Ryan Railsback reiterated that Sherry Joe Bates' case is not affiliated with the Zodiac case, stating nothing has changed on the front. In a recent press release, case breakers accused law enforcement agencies of ignoring evidence, mishandling DNA, and succumbing to apathy, egos, and fear of humiliation. The whistleblower from case breakers emphasized that impact on victims' families and documented uh, over two dozen instances of law enforcement unprofessionalism. Mm. Ooh. This case is so weird and deep. Casebreakers called for a serious review of the action by SFPD, Riverside PD, and FBI, emphasizing that n- the need for answers for the victims' families. FBI San Francisco office, office reiterated that the investigation in Zodiac Killer remains open and unsolved declining further to comment due to respect for the victims' families. So that is a recent article, kind of these, this group, online group, weird, weird online groups, yeah. you know, probably have a podcast or they probably have a podcast or a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're out there running their mouths and picking fights with the FBI, which always ends well. Last one, I think. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's the last one. This is, this is Brian's. This is this is Bunker Brian in 2000. <laughs> He's here, everybody. I have his DNA him. samples. It was Chris Hansen. <laughs> He's hiding back there. Why don't you take a seat, Brian? He's there. back there on CompuServe. I'll, I'll go get him for you. <laughs> so this last potential victim, potential, not a victim. He wasn't a victim. He may have been a victim. Last potential identity of potential suspects. Arthur Lee Allen. Mm -hmm. In his 2007 work, Zodiac, Robert Graysmith proposed Arthur Lee Allen as a potential suspect given uh, circumstantial evidence. Is that right? Circumstantial? Yeah. Proud of you. Proud of you. Boop. Boop. Yeah. Boop. The suspicion surrounding Arthur Lee Allen was potential Zodiac killer was primary based on the circumstantial evidence and the circumstances of his involvement in the Zodiac investigations. Here are some reasons why he was considered a suspect. First one, police interviews and search warrants. Allen had been interviewed by the police early in the Zodiac investigations, indicating a connection to the case. Moreover, he was the subject of several search warrants over a period of 20 years. 20 whole years. Yep. Suggesting level of suspicion that persisted over time. Another thing, Robert Graysmith's assertion. The author of the book, Zodiac, advanced Allen as a potential suspect based on the information available to him and the connections he saw in the evidence and Allen's background. The next point is detective consensus. In 2007, Graysmith highlighted that several detectives involved in the case considered Allen to be the most likely suspect. The consensus among law enforcement added weight to the suspicions surrounding him. However, it's crucial to note that despite these factors, Allen was never conclusively proven to be the Zodiac Killer. In fact, in 2010, David Toshi, a key figure in the investigation, stated that all evidence against Allen had ultimately turned out to be negative. A lack of concrete evidence and conclusive proof had left the identity of the Zodiac Killer unresolved. And the case remains one of the most enduring in criminal history. He died, Arthur Lee Allen died in 1992. So that is my exhaustive list. I remember seeing somewhere that a relative of Arthur Lee Allen got some DNA samples and like sent them in and they didn't match. I don't know which, what they, he or she gave so, in, in May of 2018, the Vallejo, uh, Vallejo Police Department announced that their intention to attempt to collect the Zodiac's DNA from the back of, uh, of stamps he used during his correspondence. Ooh. The analysis by a private laboratory was expected to check the DNA against GED match. 
it was hoped that the Zodiac would be caught in a similar fashion to serial killer Joseph D'Angelo. Joseph James D'Angelo. May 2018, a Vallejo police detective said that the results were expected in several weeks. As of October 2022, no results have been reported. Jeez. So we, at this point, any suspects that we have are deceased. Yeah. Yes. Pretty much all of the main. Now, there's so many suspects. If you look, right. look out there, there's so many. But I gave kind of the silly ones and then also a bunch of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. If they looked at this guy for 20 years, like did all kind of stuff over 20 years, and they couldn't find anything, you probably didn't do it. But I don't know. But go ahead, Brian, you, you jump on board here. I think that it was probably one of two major people. It was, it's got to be either Arthur Lee Allen or I think um, Rick that knew them personally. Because at some point, this kill, at least when you were referencing, this killer started with the couple that he knew personally and kind of like went from there. Now, I, I could be wrong about this, but did Rick, Rick knew somebody personally in the whole uh, ordeal and Arthur Lee Allen knew somebody personally in the whole ordeal? Uh, Richard Gakowski uh, knew two people. Okay. Okay. He's the one that moved across. Like, yes. The country. Fall, okay, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. He moved following uh, Darlene Farron, who became she got married and stuff. I think Arthur Lee Allen was he was hanging out with somebody at one point because they referred to him as Lee, didn't they? Like friends of his. Uh, I think so. Like the people that the people that got murdered. Well, no, no. I mean, like somebody that I'm trying to recall here. It was early on in the case, one of the first murders. They would hang out at painting parties, and someone referred to their friend as that was Lee. Lee. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, I do remember that now. That was a big piece that they never could connect because they never could push the um, the warrants on Lee after a certain point. So. Yeah. It, I guess it's fair to note that like they have never while the police and they never um, officially charge anybody because they know that they have to be very they have to be very clear because they only get one shot they mess that up they're not getting another shot if they, they they put all this effort forward to say this was it and then it's not it and they, there's something that messed up or they don't have the clear enough they, they can't do it again if they figure it out later they get one shot to you know take these guys to trial. So Jordan, what do you think? What is your theories? What do you think happened? Who was it? Well, hold on there. Brian, did you have some, you some other ones? First, Brian? Did, you have, did you have other ones? I do think, I, I do think it was one of those two guys. I do think that it was a personal relationship early on. And then they kind of like developed into like, I wouldn't say like, a, you know, rampage or whatever, but something that inspired them inspired this person to go on this killing spree and then i think the zodiac thing just kind of popped into their heads after like it was just a, like an idea they had like maybe i can turn this into something and make myself some kind of uh spectacle oh um um lewis joseph myers attended the same high school as faraday and jensen so that's where that came from that's one of them and then yeah, but then again, this yeah. is also again across state lines too. So there is the theories of that: were they actually connected, or was he, he or she, taking credit for other killings that were just out there? There were some details early on, but I don't think it was entirely that way over the course of the everything. So a lot of twists and turns there. But I, I do think, I mean, I, I do think the Zodiac's dead. I think that's one thing, but. I, I, I think it was one of those major, I think it was either Arthur Lee Allen or, um, or Richard that knew the personal victims at first. So Jordan, who do you think the Zodiac is? Mm. I, I do think there has to be a reason. The, the, whoever this is the Zodiac, I think there needs to be a reason like a, why they stopped killing or writing. There has to be like, like a it seems like they would have kept going until they would have got caught, right? Just the, the way, the amount of like publicity he wanted or she wanted for themselves. 
there needs to be a logical reason why this person stopped doing it. And it seems like, at least with uh, uh, as a Richard, it seems like a lot of that stuff sank up or synced up, um, sunk up as far as like letter stopping being written or like time, just timing of everything. But I always thought that like, and then based on this totally on the movie, the Zodiac, uh, it was Arthur Lee Allen. Just because, well, you know, the writer of the book, which was Grayson. Gray Smith. Gray Smith. Which, yeah, which is what the movie was based off of that book. So, like, obviously is much biased than that, but apparently it's pretty accurate as far as what the police did. Can um, not solve it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Screw it up? Yeah. <laughs> but and there was so much, there was so many, like, red tape issues. Like, they didn't. They didn't have the yeah. ability to, to fax than... information over state yeah. lines to other offices and things right. like that. So there was a, just a lot of like misinformation going back and forth. I just did like my own like, I don't know. Over the years, I've kind of looked at, into this here and there. Like Arthur the Island always kind of stuck out with me. But I don't know, that Richard guy, man, the whole moving across the state, Falling the timing of that, that whole thing, like, knew, like, and he knew one of the, one of the victims, right? Yeah, he followed her across yeah. the state lines. To, New, to Albany, New York, yeah. and worked in the competing newspaper of her husband. Yeah. That's interesting. So, riddle me this. Do you think it could be multiple victims? Multiple, I'm sorry, multiple murders? It's definitely possible, sure. This what's, would like, what's, more li- what's more likely? That's one guy that did all of this, or is it multiple people? Mm. I think I think a killer. If there was a second killer, it could have been one of the one of the victims. But and he could have taken credit, he or she. But do you think it was a copycat? Well, you say you think one of the killers uh, might have been one of the victims. No, no, no. I was saying that one of the victims. Was not killed by the the act the acting Zodiac uh, okay, killer. Okay, okay, okay. They okay. took credit for it anyway. Gotcha. Now you said he killed thirty seven people. Then they already then they yes. scribbled on that on that cop car, or they're I mean, outside their their one victim's car. Do you think the reason why the letter stopped and everything is because he got put in jail for a speeding ticket or unpaid tickets, and he was just in jail the rest of his life? Me wouldn't be for speeding tickets, but I'm, yeah, I'm saying I, like in jail for but whatever. That's what I'm, I'm saying there had to be a reason why he stopped writing. He could have slipped on the steps and broke his neck. Yeah, he fell in the shower. Yeah, could have got bored. Yeah, yeah. He got a got an Atari or something. Is that when they <laughs> <laughs> he started playing pong? Yeah, he yeah. got into the pinball craze. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Pac Man was was hot. I mean, I personally think it was multiple people that were. It was a few. It's like, Five murders out of how many? And one guy writing letters? I mean, crazy people write letters all the time. But like, yeah. think how many people write letters to murderers in, in, in jail that are like, I'm in love with you. You know, like mm-hmm. that type of stuff. It happens all the time. I, ca- I cannot think of a, in the 70s, satanic panic, like all this stuff's going on. Serial killers are huge. Like, yeah. I can't think of a more of a reason than be like, there's one guy writing letters. And there's a bunch of like there's some people that murdered a couple people. They were disconnected. They used different weapons. I mean, other than that yeah, one right, guy yeah. seeing them, knifing, shooting. Yeah, like all, it, like they even say he did different things. Yeah. So Which why is unusual was, for a serial killer? Right. He didn't. Yeah. He, other than he was killing, you know, young um, yeah. couples. Which I mean, am I right? <laughs> who who could who you know who who of us hasn't thought about that? On a day? <laughs> no, but like. There's, and then you have a sensationalized media going crazy about this, being like, "Oh my God, we're all gonna die from the Zodiac." Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's, I think it's not, I think it's more likely that it's multiple people with one or two, like a few people taking credit for it, sending. I mean, ciphers. If you saw the first cipher, you know how to make the rest of them. You know how to like make the logo and like. Say yeah. the things that he said, which everyone did because the, let, the letters were yeah. posted. So it's yeah. like you can easily mimic that stuff, unless it's like the pens, like a pen penmanship type of thing. Well, that I mean, that goes if you says yeah. multiple people, they go, they could go back, to, they could go back to the uh, the, the teachers who saw the two, the married couple. 
yeah. who solved it. They were the killers. It was yeah. them. They wanted to be solved. <laughs> they took they took the reins. I think it's I think it's just one guy writing letters. Maybe he knew how to get the media's attention really well. He was really good at marketing. These other guys weren't really good at marketing. They were probably in letters too, but they were just getting thrown away because they're like the Zodiac, and yeah. they're like opening that one up, you know. I mean, also the Arthur Lee Allen thing. Uh, like I think that the killer would have kept doing this until they died or were caught. But Arthur Lee Allen, what was he doing after seventy four? I can't remember. Like what? Mm. Why? What, like what would have caused him to? If it was him to actually stop, his back started hurting or something. Maybe <laughs> maybe the heat was getting on him because he kept getting like yeah. <laughs> for twenty years he kept getting uh, poked and prodded by the police. So he's like, I got I got to stop. Or I would think he would have to start back up again if it was like a truly. Because he died in ninety two, right? Yes, he had to have, unless he was just good at like maybe he moved. I can't remember what it, what it said about him. The other thing is too is that at that age or that long into it, is he capable of? Things? Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just don't know what he, it is weird that he stopped and it seemed like they said in the letters, he looked like he was, he sounded like he was getting crazy yeah. or as time yeah. went on in the 74 shooting again, couldn't have been him. Yeah. Could have been another guy yeah. who shot a ca- cab just, driver, you yeah, know, some nut job just writing and saying they did it. Exactly. Or it could have been Zodiac killed the first four guys, the first four people. And mm-hmm. then the, the, that cab driver was someone else he took credit for cause he yeah. was in the area or something. Yeah. If you had to say, if you had to like, okay, here's a magic wand, Brian, put anybody in handcuffs. You, the uh, the time machine question mm-hmm. that we brought up in one of the last episodes. You go back in time, okay? You can go back to 1974 and arrest one person. Who would you arrest? Arthur Lee Allen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Mm. Because here's the thing. I, like whether... He, End of the day, whether or not he was the Zodiac killer, he was convicted of other creepy crimes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Lock him up. And I'm just reminded that, like, there was all the, the, um, uh, the Lake Tahoe murders that could have been associated with him, murder in Lake, Lake Tahoe, that, that murder, which was not, not, it was very close to, like, San Francisco, right? Where's Lake Tahoe at? Yeah, didn't he claim... Like, I'm just throwing this out there. Didn't Arthur Lee Allen claim once that <laughs> he had blood on his knives from killing a chicken for dinner in the film? <laughs> I, th- I think so, yeah. That might have been, that might have been like. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, in the movie, I know you had the watch that had like the Zodiac symbol on it. I think that was, the soul that Zodiac, was, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that was real or made up or not, though. I mean, that, what I will say in the film is they went into a lot of detail in the case. They did, yeah. So here's something else. Um, it's his birthday today. <laughs> oh, so he did. So Alan owned and wore a Zodiac brand wrist, wristwatch. Okay. All right. Okay. Nice. He also lives in Vallejo and worked minutes away from one of the Zodiac victims, Farron, resided. In 2002, the SFPD developed a partial DNA profile from the saliva on the stamps and envelopes of the Zodiac letters. The SFPD compared this partial DNA to that of Allen. The DNA comparison was also made with the DNA of John Cheney, who was Allen's former close friend and the first person to suggest Allen may be the Zodiac. Hmm. Since neither test results indicated a match, Allen and Cheney were excluded on the contribu- uh, contributors of the DNA. Retired police handwriting expert Lloyd Cunningham, who worked on the Zodiac case for decades, stated, they gave me banana boxes full of Allen's writings and none of his writings even came close to that of Zodiac, nor did DNA extracted from the envelopes on the letters come close to Arthur Lee Allen's. So it seems like there's a lot of here and there. Like, Yeah, but like I, I got a question, not the handwriting so much, but I got a question. That, what is the DNA accurate? Like what... <laughs> How do they have his saliva from 1970? From the uh, the, the the letters, the, uh, the the. But how accurate is that compared to like? I mean, it has to be accurate enough that they could get a profile of it. It would either be here's a. It's not like it's going to be like oh because it's so old it's a little different. Like it's just like here's his DNA profile, and if if they have to have DNA profile, 
or they don't. Like it's like one or the other. They either have it or they. It's not like they have half of it. So if they have a little bit of it, it's 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 deterioration over time that I'm I'm curious about. Like when the, how do you maintain that over time? To e- like does that even hold that? Over no, time? right? Yeah. I mean, on the back they, of a stamp, right? They've extracted DNA from things like from woolly mammoths and crap, right? Yeah. So. Uh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> it's real, man. Dino DNA. <laughs> the handwriting thing, I feel like, I don't know. You write with the other hand for, the, for like the letters, you know, I don't know. Some of the suspects, yeah. at least, was Alan was ambitious. I think so, yeah. Right? yeah. But then you're like kind of like making up excuses for why he isn't. Right, him. yeah, yeah. You know, you're kind of like grasping with straws. Yeah. Like, he could have been it. Maybe. Or he could have been one of many. You know, he could have been. I think that there is. There's I, first off, there's so many other people that they say, even from recent times, like they're like, oh, this guy did it. Like there's a, a there's a story about a police detective. Uh, he wrote a book called The Black Dahlia Avenger. That his father. Was the perpetrator in the 1947 Black Dahlia case. In his follow-up book, he argued circumstantial evidence that his father was also the Zodiac based upon a police sketch and similarity to the style of Zodiac <laughs> letters. The correspondence had written the unidentified suspect in the, Dahlia, the Dahlia case. So, I mean, this... Have you guys this, done the Black Dahlia stuff? No. no. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. Doran's doing that one because <laughs> this one took a lot out of me. Yeah. There's, there's so, I can't believe how many there are out there. That's why it's one... And, that's probably why it's the... Most famous like serial killer. It's, it's probably one of the most. And there's people that there's people that release books about it, like, like my father is him. Like, my father was this. I'm gonna write an entire book about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't he wasn't just like a killer. He was a he was a social like boogeyman back then. It, it became the thing that people feared in the media and and going out at night, at least in that area. Yep. And he was doing this. He did it at night in broad daylight, like. That's right. terrifying. You don't know, like, what, when they're, you know, he's going to strike next or kill next. It had to be, I bet you it was like one of those things where it's like, uh, the church was like, oh, say that these are killing, they're, he's murdering people. And like, it never actually, that's like part of the, ho- co- the <laughs> hoax, uh, like, uh, theory is like, it was the society being like, if you go, go up there and neck in the woods, uh, they're yeah, going to murder yeah. you. Make out you road. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, they were like, the church was spreading it as a way to get kids not to go out and commit mm-hmm. sins. That's, that's, you have to get, that's a lot of people like, you have to get in on a conspiracy theory, though. You have to have one person, one priest saying it in the 60s. Yeah, but it's on, it's on, the, uh, it's on the news and stuff, then, though. They have to be. One priest could have been writing letters. Yeah. Yeah. Reminds me of the yeah. Cropsy thing. You ever hear that that stuff? The Cropsy murders? Is that in New Jersey? Yeah, like New York, New Jersey. Yeah, a... It was Campfire Tale that was like a real child killer or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a documentary on Netflix. Like one of the first big documentaries on Netflix, I think. I did watch that for some reason. Wait, so was that like made up? Was that, was it, well, was it, be, it, it was and it wasn't. It was a real killer, but he almost became a folktale that turned into like all these. Like a cautionary stories. kind of thing? Yeah, like like don't go out in the woods and, and after a night, like that kind of thing, or crops he's going to yeah. get you. Okay, so there are, again, we have no way of solving this in, this murder mystery. We are really bad at solving things. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we're just chat we're just chatting. Yakking it up. What do you think the what do you think the phrase chit chat came from? Chit chat. Yeah. Chit. <laughs> chat. Yeah. Chat. No idea. I don't know, I'm just wondering. I'm gonna look it up. That's what happens whenever you're me. I spend most of my day just wondering dumb crap that no one cares about. And you guys look at me like I'm weird. Yeah. Is it a simile? What's a simile? Conversation <laughs> about matters that are not important. Yeah, where'd it come from? What's, what's his entomology? What does it do? Like uh, fireside chat, maybe? Fireside chat? Where's fire means shit somewhere else? Hmm. Well, I guess. It was the reduplication of chat. 
And the first known use was 1605. 1605. So they didn't want to say chat chat. They're like chit chat. <laughs> yeah. Now you'd also say chit chatty or chitterone. 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 Oh, that's a good one. Chitty chat. We're just sitting here chitterone in about. <laughs> what did we call Brian earlier? The beans bunker? Bunker beans? Bunker beans. Bunker beans burn. That's me. Yeah. Brian Bunker Beans. Brian Bunker Beans. That's a good, that's a good screen <laughs> that's name me. for you. Brian Bunker Beans. Change everything you owned. Brian Bunker Beans right now. All right. Everybody, thank you for Maybe being here. Maybe the Manson thing, though. <laughs> that could go along with multiple. I mean, it wasn't Charles Manson, but like along with the multiple killer thing for the yeah. Zodiac. I, mean, I don't think it was them, but. What was the movie Hairspray about? I don't think I ever saw it. I don't okay. know. The original or the remake? I don't know. I was just thinking about Fried Green Tomatoes. Was John again. Travolta in, in that? I don't know. Let's talk movies, guys. <laughs> it's, it's... No, yeah, John Travolta was in the remake of Hairspray. Okay. What was, what was the right. movie with the... That a mo- Gilbert Grape. What was eating Gilbert Grape? That's what I was trying to think of earlier. Do you guys ever see that movie? Yeah. It's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. It's, it's I just so remember depressing. the commercials. What was what was eating Gilbert Grape? We should uh, write it. His life, yeah. We should yeah. make a YouTube channel called What What Was Eating Gilbert Grape? Because Leo DiCaprio was he in that disability? Oh, yeah, younger yeah. brother, and then his mother was very overweight, and then she. I, I won't. I, you know what? You can figure. It <laughs> you out. figure it out. Was it like Benjamin Button type of thing? No. No. It, <laughs> So what was the point of the movie? Just, because he was uh, like this 20-year-old dude with all this like baggage? Family stuff going on, yeah. So what was the ending? Uh, he got AIDS. Uh, <laughs> you said he got AIDS? Is that what you said? He got AIDS. <laughs> he got AIDS. Oh, he got AIDS. I thought you said he got AIDS. He got eaten. <laughs> like, man, that would have really just ca- that was really capped that movie off. Jeez. That had to end horribly. Like, uh, gas I, leak, I, everybody died. <laughs> I mean, like, like, a, like probably yeah, like a sense all, of right? hope at yeah, the end. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, oh man, it's hard to watch. It wasn't like watch. one of those movies that you just like hate yourself to watching after. Yeah. Well, was that right after Titanic? That was before, right? What? This is like the nine, like mid nineties, I think. That's when it came out. When was Titanic? Ninety nine, like two thousand, something like that. No, Titanic. Six or ninety seven. Titan. I don't know because I went. My first date ever was a Titanic. My first date ever, and it was terrible. It was your first date? Was Titanic? Yeah, and then I got stood up. 1997. What about Gilbert Grape? Oh. Um. oh. <laughs> What's eating? What year is that eating? Gilbert. Him? 94. Yeah, I'm going to say 94. 93. Ooh. Oh, Johnny Depp was in that. Mm-hmm. He was Gilbert Grape. Yeah. Have yeah. you guys seen the film True Romance? Yeah. Okay, you've seen it. Have you seen it, Chris? Hell no. What? You ever see a little romance? <laughs> a little romance? Yeah, it's no. a, it's a, it's like a, it's, it's a movie. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I figured that. Right, hold on, hold it's on, a, hold it's, on. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a movie. Shut up, shut up. Honeymoon in Vegas? Nope. With Nicolas Cage? I seem, you mean like leaving Las Vegas? That's very different. I yeah, don't know. Two different- one is okay. Leaving Las Vegas, he's an alcoholic trying to kill yeah. himself. Um, honeymoon in Vegas. Honeymoon, honeymoon in Vegas. Is he Elvis. Wait, is that the, is that the one with Ashton Kutcher and that girl Brittany Murphy that died? <laughs> no, that's 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 a different Vegas movie. It's Honeymoon in Vegas. He no, played Claire a, Danes was in that one. Elvis impersonator. In that? <laughs> yes, you know. Okay, yes, right, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I've seen that a long time ago. The idea is that his wife is Sarah Jessica Parker. <clears throat> and James Caan's wife that died looks just like her. So he sets it up in a poker game <laughs> that Nicolas Cage like loses a bunch yeah, of money yeah, to yeah. him, sets it up that the wife has to go with him and or the girlfriend or whatever. It's a very funny it's, movie. And I'll, I'll say this. The only reason I bring it up is because <laughs> Nicolas Cage flips out in the second half of that movie like to an amazing yes. degree. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did you ever see A Far Off Place? <laughs> The Disney movie with the people in the desert. Um, some. If we're gonna talk some, obscure movies, no, it's, not, it's a Disney movie. It's not obscure. It's in the nineties. 
Have you seen Solar Baby? Yes. No. No. Yes, I have. Chuck and I used to watch it all the time. Like we watched like recently. A couple years ago. It's not very good. <laughs> um did you ever wait, wait, did you ever see did you ever see um Deathbed, the bed that eats? Eats people. Yeah, yeah I've seen that's them. cool. Um There's a lot of bad movies I like. Like uh, you guys have seen Miami I've Connection, heard, right? Nope. What? Um Darby O'Gill and Little People. Okay. <laughs> Far Off Plays nineteen ninety three. Man, the, the early nineties killed it. Um what's her so um that's who it was. Uh Reese with this room was in it. Disney movie? Yes. It's as a it's it's a live action movie that you have to like escape across the desert because her family gets murdered. <laughs> like ac- across the Sahara. Like and she's young in this ninety three. She's pretty young. All right. Yeah. I remember watching Never it as a kid for it. some reason. I think we had it on cassette tape. Yeah, a little romance, 1979. That's a two 13 year olds runaway in Paris together. There was a, there's a movie, there's one movie I haven't been able to figure out in my life. It was a kid's movie. Okay. Obviously. Okay. Okay. You sure. You sure. All I know, I remember, and I don't, I don't think you guys will get it. There was a, it's about like a troll that lives under a rainbow and it's like a rainbow machine. <laughs> and that's all I remember. And apparently there was like, they had this troll had a rainbow machine. It was a kids movie. I've been trying to look it up. You just weren't dreaming this, and you're <laughs> tucked up in your little Betty by with your footy pajamas on. <laughs> in your in your baby bunker. <laughs> baby bunker. Are we still recording? Yes. <laughs> All right, we gotta end this now. Jordan's gonna look up the. Keep talking for a minute afterward. <laughs> we put we put all the banter at the end so people like get suckered into it. Anyway, anyway, thank you everybody for being here with us. Sticking to us this is a long one. We have two episodes. Two episodes that are super long because they cover something insanely deep and insanely long and just took a lot out of my life to get this together. Writing this up was a living hell because it's so intricate, so crazy, and completely unsolved. Jordan, uh, thank you again, yeah, Jordan, yeah, yeah. for being here. Thanks for doing all that, Thanks Chris. for gathering aboard. You're doing the next murder one. Okay. Um, Bunker Brian. Bunker Beans. Brian Bunker Beans, thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking along this ride with us. Thank you for turning your lights on and opening the door. <laughs> I got to clean up the office down here. It's been <laughs> it's been an experience. I I got to go uh, put a fresh coat on this floor <laughs> to get it nice and smelly. How many sheen. how many steps up do you have to go to get to the surface? Or is it a ladder? Actually, no. I have it, it's a series of segways on the lar- the longest slant known to man. Okay. <laughs> actually like i have to climb it for at least five minutes on a segue before i can reach the surface and i don't always reach it because of my size of women, so it's very dangerous <laughs> well thank you for being here we hope to have you back soon in the future sometimes thank you we uh all love you thank you again for uh Bri- bunker brian find him at uh what was it again Cream team. team on twitch.tv slash cream team which i team slash cream team it'll be in the show notes also <laughs> <laughs> cream, cream <of> twitch.com <laughs> slash cream team it'll be in the show notes that'll be geez. anyway um, also a member of Deathlehem mm-hmm. our intro mm-hmm. theme music and we love you and we thank you so much for being here for being I love here you guys. thank you guys for having course, me it's, it's been fun. we will see you again soon on another mysterious day mysterious time mysterious place Jordan tell everybody to, to follow us and find us Follow us and find us. Like us. Comment. Stay mysterious. <laughs> what does that mean? On YouTube at Mysterious Pals. Yes. Uh, Mysterious Pals at gmail.com. www.mysteriouspals.com. Mysteriouspals.com. Mysteriouspals.com. Find us there. Yeah. We're on Instagram. At Mysterious Pals. On uh, Twitter. Threads. threads. All the station socials. The book face. If you go to the website, it's all there. <laughs> There's Jordy LaForge. Thank you again, everybody out there. Thank you, Brian. Bunker Brian, Beans, and Jordan. Good night, everybody. Thank you again. (laughs) 